God, I know without a doubt that it's not by accident that those who are here are here. You have so willed it. And God, I know your voice. And I thank you in advance for giving everyone under the sound of my voice victory. <laughs> God, no one will leave this sanctuary the same way that they entered. Your word is here. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God for this opportunity. My brothers and sisters in Christ, want to preach from the thing this morning, all you need is a word. All you need is a word from the Lord. I, I, I know that you are facing different situations in your life. I know that you sometimes are facing some disappointments. And I also know without a doubt that sometimes our life situations will cause us to wonder if God has forgotten about us. I'm here to tell you that no matter where you are in your scenario or in your season of life, all you need is a word from the Lord. I don't care what you're facing right now. And there are people in this space that are facing some situations and scenarios that I might not name. But I'm here to tell you that one word from God can change all that you stand in need of today. I want to decree before I even start preaching that you are not going to be the very same any longer as long as you receive the word from God. God's one word can turn your situation all around. I know that it's not easy when you are praying and you're not getting the results. I know sometimes it's not easy when you are being faithful to the call of God and seemingly you're not getting any results. Come on, somebody. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to act like you're the only one. There are some others in the room that feel the same way you feel. And you feel like giving in. But I'm here to tell you that this is not the time of getting, giving in. This is not the time of giving up because your grace is going to bless you and is going to teach you that it's not in vain. When you read the text, the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, Ammon and was with the Ammonites that came against Jehoshaphat to battle. We could assign names to these enemies that would apply to us personally. And I've learned, you all, that it's not always the enemy that is against us. Sometimes God allows these situations to happen so that God can get us where God wants us to be. Amen, somebody. I don't want you to always think that the enemy is always on your back. Now, he's going to try to do what he does. But I'm here to let somebody know that it's not always the enemy. Sometimes that God is allowing that to happen so that you can be in the space that you need to be according to the will of God. Have you ever felt like you were in the middle of a war zone? Have you ever felt like you were in the middle of a war zone and the enemy was surrounding you? 
and you turn to the east and there was the enemy, you turn to the west and there was a different enemy, and you turn to the north and there was no relief, I know this morning by the Spirit of the Lord that somebody here this morning is in that very situation. You love God. You're doing your best to serve God. You're doing your best to live right. Come on, somebody. You're in the fight of your life, though. You, you don't see any signs of it letting up. And you try not to cry and not to be a whiner and to always look down. But the fact of the matter is you really don't feel like God is doing anything about your situation. But I'm here to let somebody know this morning you in the right place because all you need to get through this point is a word from the Lord. It's time to stop engaging in the enemy. Stop allowing the enemy to entertain you. You go to bed at night and you worry. You're worrying in your sleep. You wake up in the middle of the night and you're worrying. You got phantoms of imagination of what's going to happen or what's not going to happen. You wake up in the morning and you feel like something has rolled over your body because in your sleep you did not have good rest. I'm here to let somebody know tonight is the last, today, right now is the last night. You're going to have a sleepless night. All you need is a word from the Lord. I know sometimes you're trying to fake it, you're trying to praise it like you got a breakthrough and you're bound right now but as God as my witness today you're going to be made free because there's a word from the Lord and the word gives life, the word gives hope, the word gives faith, the word gives future, the word is a right now word when it comes from the Lord, you engage one enemy and think maybe you're making some progress. Then all of a sudden you look and the enemy has reinforced and comes on even stronger. Then here comes those people who feel like it's their job and their ministry to tell you how bad it is and how mean the enemy is. This is nothing but magnifying what the devil is doing. The Bible says Jehoshaphat feared. Faith comes by hearing. And fear comes by hearing. I said faith comes by hearing. But fear comes by hearing. You've got to be careful what you listen to. Come on, somebody. People will tell you you're not going to make it. People tell you you look like death itself. That's all right how I look. But guess what? I'm coming out alive. And I'm coming out better than I've ever been before. I may look like sadness, but gladness is in the atmosphere. I may look like sickness, but healing is my virtue. Ah, oh, there's a word from the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and fear comes by hearing. You go to the doctor and they give you a report that's not favorable and you digest what you just heard. But you've got to match what you just heard from them to what God says in his word. Every time you hear something negative, you've got to know that God has the last word. Ah, you may have spoken over my life that I will never be anything, but God's word says I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. I'm your beginning and I am your end and there is nothing impossible with God. The greatest weapon Satan has is fear because fear will open the door to sickness. Fear opens the door to disease. Fear opens the doors to depression. I'm preaching somebody. Fear opens the door to oppression. Fear makes you worry and gives you anxiety. Fear will bring confusion. Fear will steal your joy. 
fear will steal your peace and bring you into bondage mentally and emotionally and spiritually. Fear will take your life out of here earlier than what God has ordained. Fear will take you away from that which God has given you by faith. Job said in Job 3.25, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come upon me. Fear is a child of the devil. How do I know? Because God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. It's a spirit. I'm scared to get up. I'm scared to go out. I'm scared to spin. I'm scared to live. I'm scared to enjoy myself. I'm scared. I'm scared of what I might, I might end up with this. I might end up with that. Whatever you end up with, that will be here on earth because God has the final word. Are you with me? You've got to stop being worried about, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. I'm, I, my family had this. My family died of this. And people in my family had this. And people in my family had breakdown. And I'm afraid that I'm getting ready to have a breakdown. You ought to be a testimony and say, I, my family may have gone through this. And my kinfolk may have gone through But I'm going to be the first one to conquer by faith. I'm going to be the first one. Ah, my family might have died out of, because of, but I'm going to stand here as a witness of God and I'm coming through it. My daddy might have died at 60, I'll die at 80. My parents may have worked all their life, I'll retire at 65. In good health, in good mind, with plenty of resources. Hello, somebody. You've got to determine in your mind that my best days are ahead of me because God says it. Fear has a cousin called torment. I don't care who you are, how spiritual you are, how anointed you are, at some point of our lives, we're going to have to face off with fear. You have to face it. You, you, you've been going around the corner with it. You, you got to say, okay, come on, come on here. What have I been wasting all of God's time worrying about? Mm. Okay, I didn't, don't have a job, but I still have food. Don't have a job, but I still have clothes. Huh? So is that the best you got, devil, to come to try to block it? Because when God opens the door, it's going to be a double portion of what you thought I did not get. Hello, somebody. Y'all thought I was hard on Dottie a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't hard on her. I was giving her the word. And the word brought some stuff to manifestation. When the prophet was speaking, he was speaking about the fact that jobs are going to come, new breakthroughs are going to come. And it's coming. For those of you still waiting, don't, don't, don't stop praying. Uh, 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 pastor, I, I, Pastor, look, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, get, 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 get a refill today. Get enough to make it through the rest of the week. No, 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 no. So when Dottie left out of here, she texted me on Monday and said, guess what? I didn't, she didn't have to say, guess what? I might tell it. God blessed me with a new job. I want that to be a testimony. It didn't come the way she thought it was going to come. It didn't come when she thought it was going to come. It didn't come how she thought it was going to come. But God used the right opportunity when folk were laughing behind her back and in front of her face. God said, I got your daughter. Enough laughing. Enough people joking about it. I'm going to show your family. I'll even show your children who I am. I can open up a closed door. And if it ain't closed, I can create create a brand new door. Anybody know that just because they said there's no room, God said, I'm created. I am the creator of all things. Today, fear has many faces. 
Many today are living in fear of bad economy, fear of terrorism, fear of losing their income, fear of losing their homes, fear of losing their social security or never getting it, fear of earthquakes. Are you with me? Fear of this and fear of that. People are afraid. Some people are afraid to come out. People are afraid of being by themselves. You've got to remind yourself what the word says. I will never leave you nor for. No, no, no. See, I'm preaching the thing, but you've got to speak the word out of your own mouth. Because when you speak God's word out of your own mouth, it gives you power and authority. You've got to say, Leon, God says to me. No, you've got to make it personal. Look, God, you said to Leon that you would never leave Leon. Neither would you forsake Leon and will be with Leon even to the end of the age. You've got to make this thing personal. When you make it personal, it gets God's attention. See, some people want to be called by their titles. I want God to call me by my name. Huh? You've got to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is looking out on your behalf. Some of us, you know, you know, you know some of us know about the projects. Some of y'all don't know about the projects. I know about the projects because most of my family grew up in the projects off of Roosevelt Road and Racine. You know, I remember my cousin's address, 1319 uh, uh, Racine. Yeah, 1319 Racine. And then my grandmother was on Loomis. On Loomis. Are you with me? Uh, my uncles were the gangsters from uh, Racine, from no, Roosevelt Road and Racine all the way to Ashland. They ran from Ashland, Racine. They were the head gangsters. And my uncle Chester Robinson opened up a his, his, his storefront uh, meeting place called Westside Organization. And that was one of the places that changed over when he uh, got under the prayers of his mama. Uh, it came from, you know, from a gangster meeting place to a, a place of resurrection for the community. And, and it's all in the history of books, etc. But we grew up in the projects. I, I didn't grow up in the project, but I visited the project. My family was all in the project, but I grew up there because I was there every weekend. And it was interesting, there was some time when we were playing, and we were playing in the courtway. Some of y'all don't remember anything about courtway, but we were playing in the courtway. And we, after we went to the trash, because you had to go to dump the trash in the big old, uh, what do you call it? They didn't call it a dumpster, they called it something else. But yeah, that's it, yeah. And, and somebody always had to keep it with some fire so that you would burn the trash. And see, that's how I met, you know, I didn't even know I was a little boy, but, uh, 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 there were members of our faith community that lived, lived right across from my father's mother. Amen. Pat Lanier and all of them, they lived right across the street. Now, they were, they were on the upper end, you know, because they were all light-skinned and beautiful, and their mama and daddy didn't let them play with everybody. Amen. Because, and so, but we, but we, but her mother uh, and my grandmother shared a, uh, a, a, a rope, a, a laundry line. You know what they used to call them? Clothesline. Y'all gonna help me out. They, they shared a clothesline. And, and, and we were out there, we'd be playing, and I was young, you know, you know, I'm a little, a little younger than the other. I was young, but we was out there playing, and people don't even know nothing about double dutch, you know, and, and marbles, and, and jacks, and uh, mud pies, and taking the tire off of your car, and, and painting it white, and put some dirt in it, and it was your flower pot. But my point is this, when we were getting in trouble with some other folk, and I remember one time I brought my bike over to Veronica's house and somebody, two boys jumped me to take my bike. And I, I was scared to go back to my grandmother's house because my grandfather was there and I knew what he was going to do. He was going to whoop me if I didn't go back out there and whoop them. You don't let nobody take 
take anything from you. And so my granddaddy and my daddy went up and down the road. I'm going to get into them by point, y'all. And, and, and was looking for the guys who took my bike. And they found them. A grandfather stopped them, called them some names that were not given to him by birth. <laughs> and then my grandfather said to me, now what you going to do? I'm like, granddaddy, we're going to forgive. My, I was talking that kind of language then. My granddaddy said, we're going to forgive him after you whip his butt. And if you don't whoop him, I'm going to whoop you. And I said, granddaddy, no, I, I, I don't fight. He said, no, you may not fight, but you're going to learn how to fight because sometimes you've got to learn that enough fight up in you will push the enemy away from you. Are you with me? Many of y'all remember, but well, y'all don't know, I started as a little boy. So here I am with my granddaddy on one side and my dad on the other side. And I'm the, are you with me? I don't want, because I couldn't even say my name. I'm stuttering. Are you with me? But my granddaddy's look took me to a place that said, boy, if you don't shut up that stuttering and get your mouth together and at least put some bite to your voice, and I ain't never had to raise a fist in my life. My voice can do it. I have never had to spank a child in a classroom. When I went into the lunchroom and I had the responsibility of dealing with the children at lunchtime, when Mr. Perry walked into the lunchroom, didn't have to raise my voice. The only time I had to raise my voice in here Let me go somewhere. You've got to understand that even when folk are trying to make you fight a battle that's not yours, you've got to know in your heart where the real battle is. Some of y'all are fighting against stuff that folks stole from you. You ain't got to fight. Just stand there and declare that God is going to return everything you tried to steal from me. God is going to return it to me. Press down, shaking together, running over. In fact, I'm going into the enemy's camp and I'm taking my joy back. You didn't have my joy and my happiness. I, I'm snatching it back. I want it back. You can't have what God has ordained for me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, you better seed on some good ground there. So as I close, y'all, the first thing Jehoshaphat did when he was attacked by the spirit of fear was he turned to the Lord. I'm in the text. Jehoshaphat, he feared, but he feared, but he made the right choice when he turned to God. He set himself to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Some things can only come from fasting and prayer. Now, look, look, look. You, you might not give up food, but give up gossip. You may not give up fried food or this and that other, but give up worry. God gave to the church. Y'all, I'm glad to be in the church of God in Christ. Because God gave the church something that he didn't give every institution. He gave us his word, and he gave us his word through flesh, his son, and it is a living witness. Look, God gave the church everything we need to overcome this life and advance the kingdom of God. We don't have to create no new things because our weapons are not weak. They are mighty. They are powerful. They are effective. Do you know what God's word says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5? It says the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into a captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ don't know what you have in 
in your mouth. You've got power in your mouth. Y'all, I'm in the world. I mean, look, 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 look. And look. And so when you understand that God will demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And guess what, y'all? Every act of disobedience, once our obedience is complete, God is going to take care of the judging and the appearance. So guess what? If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, anybody know that you, where you belong? No, are there any confident? I got to close, y'all. Anybody who confident? Anybody who really know? When you're confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So look, y'all. So if even if I boast somewhat freely, about the authority the Lord gave us for the building, this is Jehoshaphat talking now, up for you rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed. Y'all don't take his word. Stop right there. Don't take his word back. If you are serious about needing a breakthrough in your life, then get serious about your praise and your worship. If you're serious about getting a breakthrough from the Lord, get serious about your praying and your fasting. If you're serious, you've got to understand that God is able to provide you with everything you stand in need of. So, so look, because some people will rebel against God's word, I was telling folk, I know it's odd, different, but it shouldn't be for the church. That if you're in a gathering and, and is related to God's kingdom, and the meeting or the gathering is going against faith, somebody in the space has to raise the word of God up. Okay, I'm teaching for a second. Somebody got to say, I know what we see, but what does God's word say? I'm told that something will pass. If we do that, some people say, well, I don't want to hear all that word. Please tell me when somebody says they don't want to hear the word when you're doing something about God's kingdom. That's when you got to go be a tattletale. Because see, what happens is this. I'm teaching you. When you allow people to go against the word, God will step out of the scenario until you return to his word. He says he will turn you over into a reprobate you will argue and fuss about what God says he can do and you'll say, oh no, but uh, I, uh, Reverend, we ain't got time to pray. Uh, what? We, 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 we're trying to take care of some business. We ain't come here for Bible study. Bible studies on Wednesday. We, 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 we come to have a meeting. You mean to tell me that God cannot interrupt Don't let anybody. Now, 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 now. I'm talking about related to the kingdom. Now, what you do in your household is up to you. But as it relates to this kingdom work, in this house, we speak faith. As difficult as it is to look that we're going to be paying off the balance of a $2 million mortgage, as difficult as it looks and as many people who have said to me, Pastor, that's a good dream, but it'll never happen. God walks me back, Pastor, over a few years ago when where you sitting right now, they said you would never sit in here. Where 
you walk, the doors you walk in, they said it would never be built. Can you imagine what would have happened if we had listened to their words? If you, can you imagine, William, what we would have done if we would have believed the report of the defender, the Sun Times? Can you imagine people of intelligence and education and prestige in the city? It will never happen. And yet, almost 11 years later, y'all ain't there. See, sometimes you've got to go back and ask God to help you to remember what you, how you came here. You came here on the word. You're going to stay here in the word. And that's the only way you're going to get out of here is the word. Now, now, now y'all, y'all, guess what? Everybody ain't trying to build. Whatever your life is, I'm ready. Wherever your life is, all you need is a word from the Lord. Many times we start off asking people, is there a word from the Lord? There's a word. And you ask God, God, give me the word that you want me to have for every situation I'm in. And watch God give you the word. I'm ready, Max. Don't ask nobody. What you think, what you think, what you think, God, I need a word from you. I don't want to meet, I don't want to agree, I need a word from you. Is there anybody in this space right now? Because one word can change everything. One word from God will make you unsinkable. One word from God will make you unbeatable. One word can change sickness into health. One word can change weakness into strength. One word can change nothing into much. One word from God will open closed doors. One word from God can set captives free. 